Hi everybody and welcome to Kitbashed Survival. You know, in a few weeks I'm going to be reviewing what will be the most expensive survival kit I've reviewed to date on this channel. And that is the SE Advanced Survival Kit, which has a price tag of just over $500. It's a very high quality, well equipped kit. But of course, not everybody can afford to spend $500 on a survival kit. And obviously you don't have to spend that much to have a well-equipped survival kit. And so in between now and then, I thought I would do something that a lot of you guys have been asking for anyway. And that is to review some cheap entry-level survival kits. And I can think of no better way to kick that off than by reviewing a couple of sardine can survival kits. So that's exactly what we're going to do today on Kitbash Survival. Now, of course, anytime you review a cheap entry-level survival kit, lots of people are going to jump right in and start bad-mouthing the kit and saying, oh, that's junk, it's worthless, why would you waste your money on that? I would never get that in a million years. And to be sure, some cheap survival kits are junk. But in general, my policy is that I don't instantly hate an entry-level cheap survival kit. And I feel that way for two reasons. Number one, you know, in the survival knife community, there's an old saying that says the best survival knife is the one you have on you. And I think that can be extended to survival kits as well. And while I would not recommend you staking your survival on an entry level kit like this, and I certainly wouldn't take a kit like this by itself out into the field, I will say that any survival kit, even something like one of these is better than nothing. And given a choice between nothing and one of these, I'll take these any day. Number two, which is kind of an extension of number one, is that a cheap off-the-shelf kit does not have to stay that way. It can serve as the jumping off point to making a really good kit. And that's often what I do on this channel. That's why the channel is called Kit Bash Survival. Kit bashing is a term used in the modeling world. I do model railroading, and when you kit bash something, you take components of various modeling kits and you combine them to make a unique structure. And that's what I like to do on this channel sometimes, is I'll take an off-the-shelf survival kit and I take it apart and repack it and add more components and make a much better kit. And that's what you can do with something like this. You buy a cheap off-the-shelf kit, you open it up, you repack it, you add components, and in the end, what started off as a cheap off-the-shelf kit ends up being a very high-quality kit that you have a lot of confidence in. Anyway, what I've got here is two sardine can survival kits, one made by Coughlin's and one made by Whistle Creek. We're going to open up both of these and do a side-by-side -side comparison and see which one is the better of the two. And then after that, we're going to take one or both of these and repack them into a much better survival kit. So let's start off with the Coughlin Survival Kit in a Can. It contains 32 items for signaling and creating warmth and shelter. And then on the back, the following 32 survival products along with training and common sense can save your life. Factory sealed, this can assures both the usability and the completeness of the list of contents. After the can is opened, it can be used as a cup, cooking pot, or baler. And they've got a list of the contents here. You can pause and read that list if you want. And what's interesting is down here, They've got a guide to where each item is made. So it's a mixture of items made in China, Japan, Canada, the US, Mexico, Thailand, Great Britain, and Malaysia. Coughlin's is a Canadian company. All right. So there it is, and here's my hand so you can see about how big this thing is. It's literally a sardine can that they've made into a survival kit. And they've got a list of all the contents on the lid as well. You can pause and read it if you want. All right, so let's crack it open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so first up, We've got some duct tape. I believe there's about a foot of it, yep. And we've got a match here. Here's a straight edge razor. And then we've got a bag. Looks like a little Ziploc bag. 
Not bad, I like that. You could use this to store water or once the kit is opened, you could put all the gear in here and use this as either a cup or to boil water or cook food or what have you. So I've got another match. There's another match. Looks like these are Strike Anywhere matches. I believe there's four matches total. Yeah, here's the fourth one. And we've got a book of matches. So there's some nice redundancy in terms of the fire making abilities. Then we've got three feet of reflective cord. Not bad. And then we've got 9.8 feet or three meters of multi-use cord here. And it does have a wire twist tie around that. Then we've got three feet of multi-use wire that you could use for a snare or for repairs, stuff like that. Then we've got a spool of thread, which is 101 inches or 31 meters of fishing line slash sewing thread. We've got a tea light candle. Can never go wrong with one of these. We've got a compass and let's see if it's accurate. And it is. Then we've got a couple nails. I'm not the biggest fan of nails in survival kit, but they're not bad either. You could use it to make a spear if you had to, or to help build a shelter or something like that. Let's see, then we've got a couple of fire starting cubes right here. And these are just chopped up little pieces of those larger fire starting sticks that you can buy in grocery stores. So not bad. Then we've got a large safety pin and a smaller safety pin. Here's a fish hook. I think there's another one in there. Then we've got a pen. It's got a little clip on the end of it. Then we've got a whistle. It's just a very basic whistle. Oh, it's very loud though. It's actually a very good whistle. Oh, here's the other fishing hook. Then we've got some paper. Makes sense that if you have a pen or a pencil, you should have some paper. Let's see if the pen works. Yeah, works just fine. Actually, this is not a pen. It's a little pencil. That's a lead. I thought it was a little ballpoint pen, but it's actually a pencil. That's even better because a pen can always dry up or run out of ink. Then we've got this little survival tool here, and you've seen these before in a lot of other survival kits. So according to the guide, we've got a can opener, a knife edge, a screwdriver, a ruler, a bottle opener, a four position wrench, a butterfly wrench, a saw blade, a sundial, a two position wrench, and a lanyard hole. So you know, this is very basic. You see these in a lot of inexpensive survival kits, but it's not horrible. Then we've got two more twisty ties to go with the one that was around the cordage. Then we've got the outdoor survival tips guide. It's got the same basic information that you see on a lot of these guides that you find in survival kits. And then we've got our signal mirror. Very basic, very cheap. You know, it's basically a piece of paper with a reflective coat on one side and you can peel off the back and stick it on something if you have to. But, you know, it's better than nothing. And then lastly, we've got the tin itself, which again, you could use this to boil water or cook food or use it as a cup or what have you. So here's all the stuff from the Coglin Survival Kit in a can. You know, obviously this kit doesn't have every component you would need in a survival situation. It's not the best survival kit in the world, but for what it is and for its size, I actually don't think it's that bad and it would certainly make a good starting point for building a better kit. All right, next we'll check out the Whistle Creek Survival Kit in a Sardine Can. Emergency medical supplies, nourishment, navigational aids, and more for your car, boat, RV, purse, backpack, bike, or motorcycle. For hikers, campers, climbers, boaters, skiers, sledders, fishermen, off-roaders, travelers, cyclists, and you. And then on the back, they've got a list of what's in the kit. 
for all terrain, mountain, jungle, arctic sea, watertight, crush proof, drink out of it. Now the Whistle Creek kit is packed in the USA, but obviously the components are going to be sourced from various locations. Now on the back of the kit, they've got a picture of the contents, and right off the bat I can tell that this is different from the Coglins kit, because the Coglins kit really didn't have any first aid items or food items, and this one does. So the Coglins kit is more about gear, whereas this one is more about items that can be used on or in your body. And actually the fact that these two kits are quite different is a good thing for us because at the end of this video when I repack these kits to make a better kit, it means that we can combine the two kits without a lot of overlap. So let's go ahead and open up the Whistle Creek survival kit in a sardine can. And there it is. You can pause that and read it if you want. And there's the back. Okay, so we've got this bundle of stuff and we'll open that up in a minute. We've got a whistle, multicolored whistle. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds fine. And then we've got a Tootsie Roll for some quick sugar and a little morale boost. Got some sugar for some energy. We've got a stick of Wrigley's Double Mint Gum. We've got a pencil. We've got a fire starter cube, like the one in the other kit, but this time it's just one instead of two. We've got a spool of thread for fishing line or sewing. Then we've got a straight edge razor. We've got a tiny, tiny little compass. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it does work. It is accurate. Boy, that's about the smallest little button compass I've seen. Then we've got a single band-aid. And then we've got a safety pen and a single fishing hook. So now let's open up this little bag and see what's in here. All right, so we've got some Lipton tea, and you could use the sugar in the tea if you wanted to. And the tea is just a good morale boost, and it can warm me up inside. It's always a good thing to have. And we've got a book of matches. We've got some salt. Not a bad thing to have. Actually, we got some medication. We've got some acetaminophen, two 325 milligram tablets. Acetaminophen is Tylenol, in case you don't know. Then we've got some Baxitracin ointment. Not bad. We've got an alcohol swab. Then we've got just a little bit of duct tape. The other kit had a foot of duct tape. This is maybe three or four inches. Then we've got a paper clip. And then we've got the directions and instructions. They're very brief. It's just that and that. So they've got a list of the items in the kit couple tips. They've got some tips for water purification, the ingredients of the gum. I'm not sure why that matters. And then on the other side, they've got some first aid tips and that's it. So here's all the stuff laid out from the Whistle Creek kit. If I had to choose between these two kits, I would likely choose the Coglins kit just because it has a little more equipment. But the Whistle Creek kit does have the edge in terms of nourishment, morale boost, and first aid equipment. So it'll actually be nice to combine these two kits and that way we'll have a little bit of everything. So I've got the Coglins kit over here and the Whistle Creek kit over on this side. And I'm gonna combine both kits, which means I'm gonna remove some items that are redundant. So let's see, we can keep the instructions from the Coglins kit and we'll remove those from the Whistle Creek side. I'm going to remove both of the straight edge razors for reasons that will be obvious in just a moment. I'm going to keep the pencil from the Whistle Creek side because this is a full fledged pencil whereas this one is just a piece of lead in a piece of plastic. So this will last longer. 
and I'm gonna remove this multi-tool thing, again, for reasons that'll be obvious in just a moment. We'll keep the tea light candle, if possible. I'll keep a book of matches, and I'll remove one of them. I'm gonna remove both whistles, because those will be replaced by something else in just a minute. We'll keep the snare wire. We'll keep the signal mirror piece. We'll keep the duct tape from the Coglin side, and we might as well keep the duct tape from this side as well, because it's just a little bit. I'm gonna keep all the first aid items from the Whistle Creek side, as well as this bag, probably. And we'll keep the tea and the sugar and the salt, and I guess we'll keep the gum if we can, and we'll keep the Tootsie Roll if possible. I'm gonna keep one of these spools of thread. I think I'll keep the one from the Coglin side. I'll keep one or two pieces of fire starting material. We'll keep both compasses because why not? This one's really small and two compasses are always better than one. We'll keep the sewing needle from this side and we'll keep a safety pin. I'm gonna get rid of two of these safety pins. We'll keep the four matches if we can and the two nails if possible. We'll keep the twisty ties. We'll keep all three fishing hooks. I might add some fishing weights if we have room. And we'll keep a paper clip. We'll keep the paper. I might keep this Ziploc bag, we'll see. Or I might replace it with another Ziploc bag or multiple Ziploc bags to compartmentalize stuff. I'm going to keep the three meters of reflective paracord and this cordage here, I'm going to remove it and replace it with something better. So this is what we're keeping from the two kits and now we're going to add some stuff. So on the water purification side of things, I'm going to add a Melita coffee filter. I'm going to add four water purification tablets that purify one liter per tablet. And I'll add a one liter Whirlpack stand-up water bag. On the first aid side, I'm going to add two more band-aids and then this little mini med kit that has four ibuprofens and two Benadryls. And I'll also add two Imodiums. And then remember I removed those two whistles and that's because I wanted to add a ferro rod and striker and so I'm going to knock out all that with this piece. This is a ferro rod striker whistle combo tool. So you got the ferro rod there, the striker is right here and then you've got a whistle in this end. I'm gonna add some light to this kit. I've got a little keychain light, a little LED on the end, so you can do a momentary action like that, or you can flip the switch and keep it on for good like that. I'm gonna add a real knife to this kit. This is a Victorinox Classic with the Stay Glow scales that glow in the dark. And of course the Classic has the scissors, the knife, the nail file, the flathead screwdriver, the tweezers and the toothpick. To replace that cordage that I removed a moment ago, I'm gonna add about four meters of this neon green micro cord. It's a hundred pound test. I'd like to add this nicer paracord to replace this stuff, but I don't know if there'll be room in the kit. If there is, I'll do it. If not, we'll just keep that. On the fire side, I'm gonna add a piece of fat wood to help build a fire as well as a little piece of cotton tinder if we have room, I'd like to keep these fire cubes, but we'll see how it goes. I'd like to add this 12 by 12 sheet of tin foil, a wire saw if there's room, and then finally, I'd really like to add this space blanket so that there's a shelter element in this kit, but I don't know if there'll be room. All right, so we've got all the stuff that we wanna put in the kit, so now we have to decide what we wanna repack the kit into. Now, it'd be really easy to go with something like this. This is a large waterproof tin made by Best Glide ASE. And I've already used one of these on my channel in another video to make a really cool kit. And if we repacked all this stuff into this tin, there'd be a lot of room left over and we could add a lot more stuff and sort of throw in the kitchen sink and make a really kick-ass kit. But I'd rather try to keep this as a compact kit if possible. So I'm gonna go with this tin. I got this on Amazon a while back. It's a locking tin, kind of like the Best Glide ASE tin and it also has a waterproof seal on it, but it's a little bit smaller, it's almost pocket size. 
So I'm going to try to get all this stuff into here. Obviously with this tin, I'll have to strap the space blanket onto the bottom, but we'll see if it works. And if not, we can always upgrade to the larger tin. And then in that case, we'll be able to add a whole lot more stuff to the kit. So let's see what happens. I'm going to add four little fishing weights to this kit to complement the three fishing hooks. All right, I've got everything in the kit except for the space blanket. I left out the Ziploc bag that was originally in the Coglins kit. So now we just need to secure the space blanket to the kit. So I'll do that with some rubber bands because at the moment I'm out of large Ranger bands. And of course adding some rubber bands to the kit never hurts. All right, there we go. Oh, you know what? I never did see if that nicer piece of paracord would fit into here. I could open up the kit and try to make it fit, but I think I'll just put it alongside this space blanket and it'll be fine. It won't go anywhere. And we're all set. So what started off as a cheap off the shelf survival kit, or in this case, two of them ended up being a very well equipped, nice kit that I have a lot of confidence in at this point. So just because something is a cheap off the shelf kit does not instantly mean that it's crap. All it means is that it can serve as a jumping off point to making a much better kit. Anyway, that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Eric Siegel, this is Kit Bash Survival, and I'll see you next time.